my first meet uh, when on the Midwifery Council released their scope of practice in 2022, the updated proposal. Um, and it's, it's, it's one of the worst documents I've really ever read, actually. It's got no women or babies, breastfeeding, childbirth, nothing that relates to actually having a baby in the scope of practice of a midwife, which is the foundational document that all of our national midwives must follow, or they cannot kind of practice their profession, profession. So that means that a midwife is now not really supposed to say the word woman in New Zealand, because it's considered bigoted, right? Um, the other thing about this, as far as the midwives go, is that it cost a lot of money to do this scope of practice, and it took a really long time. It took a lot, it took four years, 19 people, and over $300,000 minimum, closer to 400, um, and that was on, a, on an expected budget uh, for a project expected to last two years, and it took four. So let's assume that we can double that amount of money. And the midwives that I've been speaking to tell me that the existing scope of practice, before they even changed it, was already not fit for purpose. They can't advocate for better pay. They're overworked. They're not able to get new uh, midwives drawn to the profession because the courses take so long and are so expensive and the working hours are so rubbish. So this is what the Midwifery Council actually need to be focused on and this is their job. They are the regulatory authority, which is a corporate body under the HCPAA, uh, which is a Health Practitioners Assurance Act 2003, and it is their job to look after the midwives of New Zealand who fought for the right to even be there, as opposed to obstetricians and GPs and so on. They fought for the right to have a midwife, which is a 700-year-old word that means with woman as a career, and now their own council is telling them not to say the word woman and is asking them for mandated cultural humility. So they want them to bow down specifically in relation to trans and non-binary people, the midwives of New Zealand. And the last count I heard was that there were 12 women who identified as men and we're doing all of this for them. There won't be any, according to them, they don't want any more pink, they don't want any more flowers, they don't want any more references to women in the maternity centres, they don't want anything. They don't want us to talk about childbirth, they don't want to talk about the fact that we get 80% 80, 80 of women who give birth have a birth injury, they don't want to talk about the fact that some women are still dying in childbirth and that two and, two and a half thousand babies, New Zealand babies, every year die in childbirth or shortly thereafter and the midwifery council is worrying about whether or not the word woman is offensive and you know like this priority here priorities and the people who have mental health issues in this country are being failed by our me mental health system which at this point is a menace to the public if they're telling us that they should we should sterilize our children and mutilate their genitals then they are a menace and I don't remember, know if anybody else remembers Lake Alice, but I certainly do. Because these people were my age. These children were sitting, at, were, were being tortured at Lake Alice while I was growing up and nobody knew anything about it. And it wasn't until much later and they'd be fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting for the right to be heard, for the right to be answered for the abuse that they suffered, those children in Lake Alice being experimented on and as far as I'm concerned this is exactly the same. So delusional mental health professionals who want to hurt children have come up with a disgusting idea and they're going to actually try and make us do it all to, to our kids. <coughs> I mean, it just really, it really begins belief, doesn't it? If somebody comes up to you as a parent of a teenager in New Zealand right now, how many people here, I bet, know somebody who has committed suicide in New Zealand? Because I can think of five, just off the top of my head. And one of those was a 17-year-old boy whose mother wept in my arms and told me he didn't even get to fall in love. And I'm sorry, but cutting off his bloody genitals isn't gonna make him feel any better. And I'm sick of this. I want an answer to the mental health failures in our country. I want a better result. And I'm sick to death of watching young people die, especially our young Māori men. And I'm a mother of young Māori men and I want them to live forever. So the mental health system better get their shit together. Because as far as I can see, it's full of dangerous lunatics. And that's all I've got to say pretty much.